How's it going today? This is Greg from Legacy Productions. And um, I saw how my video on my Nikon hacked firmware has gone up in views. Well, for me, of course, not for many others. And many people ask, how do you get the firmware hacked onto one of these cameras? How do you get a standard D5100, which is an entry level semi professional uh, DSLR? I liked it because of its flippy screen. Um, how do you get that video quality that, uh, what, that I got within that video there I am and <clears throat> truthfully it takes a few simple steps it shouldn't be that hard I'm not gonna go too much I'm not gonna sit here and blab but um, whatever I'm gonna give you a quick simple explanation of this software this software is gonna involve your cameras firmware being updated and now the firmware is unstable I'm gonna say here the firmware can break your camera and if you want to do this as a risk, which I did, I was like, you know what? I got it. I got this camera here. Whatever the f happens to this camera, I can go ahead and just go return it. I can because I have full-on warranty on this thing. I can do it. For you, you guys, I don't know how you guys got you guys' camera. I'm kind of messing up your words. I don't know how you got the camera, but I have my full warranty. So if I messed it up, I was just able to go return and get another one. But I didn't. And it fully works. Show an example here. Working here. Battery's halfway dead, so... Uh, make sure to charge your battery before doing this. But I updated the firmware. If, if I can go to the setting here. Okay, firmware version. And then here, that's the firmware version that we're at. Um, I can also update it. There's an update right there. I don't know why that's coming up, but I'll look at that into a second. Uh, you can update the firmware as well. And when you update it, it should come with its, I think I left the, the actual hacked firmware. Oops, sorry. I actually, I left the actual hacked firmware inside the camera and I forgot to take it out. But anyways, this is recommended only for selected models that are on his website, um, simonpilgrim.com. If your camera does not come up on there for Nikon, then do not attempt in doing this video with any other model that is, that is not supported. Any recommendations? The best thing you should do if you're recording high bit rates, because what this video is about, high bit rates for, for your camera. My camera does that too, but I have it on a class four, so you're not going to see that much of good quality with my camera using it right now. I use a um, SanDisk Ultra Plus, 40 megabits, megabits per second, um, 16 gigabyte SD card, class 10. I use this card because of its write speeds. You can get one that's higher if you really want to achieve that full bit rate. Uh, these go up to 50 for the hack firmware. And also, I'm gonna give you some few tips and guides on how to make sure that when you're doing this, that you do not mess up or you do not you know, have something come up and you have no idea what just happened. So let's go get to the desktop right now and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, uh, one last thing I was gonna say and I forgot about this, this would have dumbfounded everyone within the tutorial before you can well it looks pretty nice uh before you can go ahead and do this firmware update you have to format your sd card which here this in the settings well, let me find it here format card which is right there you want to go ahead and format that click ok if you have anything important on the sd card make sure to get it off the card because I do not want anyone to be screaming and crying at me if they lost their family pictures or they lost a the gig that they did with the camera. Go ahead and back everything up that you need necessary. And if you had any other saved files on the SD card, go ahead and back that up. And you can go ahead and properly format the SD card. Now you got that done. Now you can go ahead and switch to your computer where I'll show you guys on how to download and set up everything for your camera. Alright, so here we are on the website for the guy that actually did the hacked firmware for these cameras. Surprisingly, someone actually put time and effort into a Nikon and went ahead and did this. This is not a bad thing. I'm very happy that someone actually knows that people that are on a budget and like to make videos tend to go for a Nikon instead of a Canon. So this guy here actually is helping us out. So if you want to donate to him, go ahead and donate here to buy, uh, to do a contribution. But anyways, let's continue on. Here he explains about the firmware. Um, and he uses these type of SD cards. He uses a Class 10 HDAC and he uses an Extreme Pro 95 megabit. Um, just like what I said, you have to use a really, really nice SD card. 
So before anything, make sure if you're gonna be doing this that you have a suitable SD card that's class 10 and that has a high bit rate for recordings. Because if you don't, then well, you're not gonna get the results that you would see within some of my videos, my newer ones, not my older ones, because my older ones are using the non-firmware. So uh, let's go ahead and show you where you're gonna go download it. There's um, a patching guide and there's a patching help. And then there's also, uh, I'm gonna, where's the link to download it at? Hmm, icon patching help. Okay. So here, you're gonna click there and it's take you directly to the to the website where you're gonna go ahead and patch it. Now, the first thing you do is go search up your firmware. Okay, so my firmware is a Nikon D5000 A01B101 upgrade. And this is the firmware that I use for my camera. So you're gonna go ahead and download the firmware, the stock firmware from the website. I'm gonna go ahead and click agree, begin and download. Okay. It's gonna start coming up now. That's an exe file. Um, don't run it as an exe. It's an auto extractor. Sometimes it doesn't work. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a folder here called Nikon to organize this tutorial for you guys out there. I'm going to drop it in there. Now, if you now if you try opening this up, it's not going to do the thing first. You want to go ahead and extract all files here, and there is the update firmware. And now the next thing you have to go ahead and do is go back onto the website and remember the file location of this, because you're going to have to go ahead and go back to this to go ahead and get the firmware set. Now you're going to go ahead and patch this update firmware now if your camera is already updated to the version that I have on my neck on D5100 um, 1.0.1 um, go up and if it's not go ahead and update to it and then from there go ahead and then update it and then go ahead and start the process what I'm about to do right now okay back where I was at so once you have that all downloaded and extracted there's your bin file that you're going to use to update your camera so the next thing we're going to do is go into the patching and we're going to select firmware and you're going to go to your file location where the firmware is at and which for me it would be at Nikon so go ahead and find your folder uh, I'm using two monitors here that's why you saw all that garbage so we're going to open it up and here it's going to tell you everything that it's it's going to do to your camera now, uh, this is the number one feature that I liked it to remove time based um, video restrictions. This, this is nice. And this is something that a lot of Nikons and even Canon have an issue with with um, time restriction. If you have a big SD card, you want to leave the camera recording on an external power supply, which is adapters out there, or you have a pretty big battery, a, bar, a power grip, and you want to go ahead and leave this camera running for long periods of time for a wedding or whatnot. Uh, this is the greatest choice out there to get. So go ahead and select that. Now this is another setting a lot of people like. You can get in live view um, manual control of ISO and shutter. It's nice. I'm going to go and select that. Now clean HDMI and LCD live view. This is a setting that I selected. I gave you an issue. I freaked out. Oh god! I bricked my camera. Well, no. Now what this does here is that when you're hooking this camera up through via HDMI, um, it looks to your LCD screen. So you select that everything on your viewfinder will disappear besides the video and in most cases that's not helpful for many people but it's helpful for someone that has their camera constantly on through HDMI and a power source so they don't really care about the viewfinder uh, next thing you have the options of a 1080p high quality 54 megabits per second um, and you got NQ instead of HQ NQ old HQ um, these two settings here, um, I didn't really click these two. I believe I did or did not, but you can go ahead and do research here, which I didn't really look into sadly. And you got, I chose high quality 54 uh, megabits per second bitrate. Now, a lot of you can choose something different, but I'm going to go ahead and leave that as is. And you have compression off, and you have compression lossless. Disable Nikon Star Eater, I just enabled it. JPEG compression quality versus space you can go ahead and do that if you want um, non-brand batteries now that is something that I like the most you can go ahead and use a non-brand battery now down here it's going to tell you the risks you can possibly do make sure to be using a standard <coughs> Nikon battery fully charged and ready set to go for this video um, because if you do this wrong you can go ahead and potentially fry your computer
a fryer computer. Yeah, yeah, a, a firmware is a fryer computer, you guys. Um, this could potentially fry your camera. So now that all that's done, you can go ahead, um, save patch firmware, and it's in redirect, and go ahead and select the file in the same folder I made an icon, and go ahead and save it there, which I'm going to do right now. Save it. Oh yeah, and also don't forget to put the name of it, which will be the same as this, which I'll go ahead and do that. Save as, it's going to save as a bin, put that. And then there you go. Your now hacked firmware is now appearing there. Uh, we can go ahead and install it onto our camera. Okay, uh, one last thing I forgot to add. This could even boggle people off even more. When you go ahead and add the firmware into your ST here, don't add it into your DCM. Go ahead and drag and drop right into your um, your camera right here, into the folder next to DCM, instead of putting it into DCM. And even if that doesn't work, then go ahead and throw it into DCM. So um, that's all, and let's continue on with the video. All right, so I went ahead and I did the whole thing. You put that SD card back into the camera. And I'm going to go ahead, turn on the camera, battery fully charged. And we're going to go ahead and let me zoom in here. Uh, I'll show you how to update your firmware. You have to go to your former, firmware version, click OK. And then there should be a setting that says update. Now, I don't want to do it myself because I already updated this camera firmware and I can break it if I do it again. I'm not sure if I can, but I'd rather not risk it. So go ahead and click update. It'll start doing its update process. It says do not shut off camera or anything like that during this process. Once it finishes and it does its job, you turn it off after it's done. Leave it off for a good five, 10 seconds. So go like one, two, three, four, five. Turn your camera. And then you look, oh, it looks exactly the same. Well, to be honest here, you have um, you can change your um, ISO and live view manually and the, and resolution if you want to go ahead and get a good resolution here you want to go to movie settings movie settings which is in my recent settings for me you go to movie quality and I chose the highest quality which in this case it says it doesn't tell you the bit rate but you already know from the firmware you did, it's going to record at the highest bit rate that you selected in the patching firmware. So once that is all done, you go ahead and start doing your own video tests. Make sure you do this in good lighting. Make sure you have a good lens. In this case, if using 18 to 55, you are kind of just butchering your camera in a way. But the best option is go for a prime or get a different lens, which I'm going to go for a Sigma lens next and uh, get a bigger SD card if you don't have one. So that is all. If hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any problems with the firmware, go check out the website, the forms, or if not, go ahead and check out my video, or not my video, go ahead and comment below if anything happened. Remember, I am not responsible if you break your camera. I'm not responsible if you damage a battery. I'm not responsible if you damage the camera itself. I'm not responsible if you mess up the SD card and hit it, the camera off the table and it breaks. None of that. We're not responsible for anything. Um, the only thing I'm responsible for is for you guys to get good entertainment. That, that was very cheesy of me, but I'm cheesy like that all the time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have fun with your Nikon D5000, D5100s. The same goes for anyone that uh, has different, different different Nikons. And if you do not have a Nikon, it's recommended for this firmware update. Don't do it. And also, always update your firmwares on your Nikon before even starting the process of hacking the firmware on your camera. So that is all. This is Greg from Legacy Production. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. That is all, and see you later.